Erica Campbell and Megan Good recently took part in an episode of the same room that's causing a lot of debate. The episode discussed cancel culture and the idea that it actually originated in the church. Take a look at a part of the discussion. If you had a teen pregnancy, canceled. Mm -hmm. If you had a child out of wedlock, Canceled. If you wore something that people didn't agree with, right. and it was, <laughs> right. and that to me is crazy because mm -hmm. this should be the place that is the most yeah. accepting place. And I'm a yeah. pastor, you know, yeah. but you, we have to be accountable to each other. We have to be mm -hmm. accountable to the history mm -hmm. of also what we represent yeah. in order to speak into it properly. Now, Erica also discussed how people shame others in the name of protecting the gospel and Jesus. To which Megan replied, "Jesus don't need your protection." So, ladies, what are your thoughts on cancel culture originating in the church? Ooh, y'all trying to put it on the church. I don't know if cancel culture originated <laughs> in the church, but I know that it is running rampant through it and has been for a very long time. And it really is a question of canceling people within the church. But I just heard right now when Stephanie, who's the host of that show, said, um, if you're a teen pregnancy, you're canceled. And it really made me think of... Uh, one of my favorite female preachers, which is Sarah Jakes. She's the daughter of Sarah Jakes Roberts, who is the daughter of T.D. Jakes. And um, I actually am great friends with her and was reading her book recently, and I came upon this. And guys, I posted this on my IG stories like m a month ago, and it made me think about it. Here it goes. For many who grew up in the church, the moment they recite a scripture, sing a hymn, pick up drumsticks, or hit a note on the piano, they are thrust into ministry. Yet so many of these same children end up resenting ministry as adults when they encounter the kind of trouble that often leads others closer to God, like getting pregnant as a teenager, or finding out that, you know, something crazy has happened in your life. All that to say, I love this part the most. How can we learn about grace every Sunday, but when the teacher needs it, we send them away? Surely, if doctors can catch colds and lawyers can be sued, ministers must find themselves needing grace. To say that pastor's kids can't get in trouble is like telling a policeman he should never have to call 911. Just because you help others doesn't mean you never need help yourself. And yo, that spoke to me because I was like, wow, when you think about sometimes the cancel culture that happens within the church... Just like she said, we forget that literally that kind of goes against the whole concept of God dying on the cross for our sins and that that's literally what Christianity is based upon is that he died on the cross so that we don't, so that even our imperfections can be forgiven and that's where grace comes from. So and ladies, also what do you let, think? I love that by the way, A. But I also think that like, where where's the room for redemption if we're canceling people in the church or out of the church? Hey. Or let's just, even on social media, when we cancel people, like when you cancel people, where is room for redemption? Redemption is like one of my favorite things to ever witness, to watch somebody yeah. come from like, just doing something horrible, experiencing something horrible, and then figuring it out and sharing their testimony and being able to give something back to the world. Like that's a phenomenal moment when you see somebody redeem themselves. And when we cancel yeah. people, I'm not, I'm not saying they shouldn't be like, you know, uh, karma or like, you know, if you do something terrible, there has to be something. Accountability. You know, accountability, sure. For but sure. But there also has to be room for redemption. Yes, but let's uh, also remember that cancel culture is man-made, right? So for me, I far think that I've been canceled by the church a long time ago. I remember going to church with my mom, who is very excitable about emotion and worship music moves her. And I remember going to that church and there was a group of women going to brunch and I specifically heard them say when she was standing away, let's not invite them, they're, they're a little too crazy. And I'll never forget that, that actually turned me away from loving God for a long time. Cause I went to that church when I was wow. maybe 13 with my mom. And then I found Jesus when I was 24. My point in this, and it can be any rela religion this applies to, I'm not just talking about Christianity, but sometimes the cancel culture like it did for me, made me actually, amplify my love for God because I was like, wait a minute, no, I love God and we have a dope relationship. I feel him within me. So what y'all are making me fit into is not who I am. So I'm actually going to be exactly who I am even more so with my God and own the fact that I do use profanity. I do dress sexy. I probably don't fit into your mold, but it made me excited about, yo, this is just this love language that I have with him and I'm good with that. So cancel culture in that regard actually made me more 
uh, it made me own more of my relationship with him and made me steadfast about it, yeah. which I, I'm thankful for because when I see people fall or people judge me, it actually builds my character even more of who I am with him. It's a Godfidence, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, don't I think was raised... I wasn't raised in the gospel church. I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness, and this was many moons ago. But what they would do is somebody did something against that doctrine, they would disassociate. And the whole congregation yeah. would have to disassociate themselves from that person. And there were ways that you could get Ouch. back in. But the purpose of that was to, I guess, protect the congregation. Um, in that sense, I understand that. But I'm like you, Jeannie, I learned from that because I felt bad disassociating myself from someone, but I understood the point of grace. And that's what we have to give people at times. We have to learn to give grace to people. Mm, and I right. think out of cancel culture, yes, that may be the punishment, but also we have to give grace to people. And that's what I'm still learning how to give to certain people when I'm wronged, when I, I feel like I'm not being treated fairly. I have to learn grace and gratitude. So, you know, yes. there's some point into it. Just remember, when a person does sin, because we all sin, Absolutely. let's give them some grace. I love yes. that. You better preach, Lonnie. That. I also better. just want to add one Lonnie. thing. When you're thinking of the protection, you have to ask yourself, are they actually protecting the congregation or are they protecting their brand and their business? On There's this new social media hangout and it's called Clubhouse. And if you haven't heard oh, of Clubhouse, yes. it's an invitation only app where you can have live audio chats with people from all around the world about business, relationships, sex, basically anything you want, gossip, and it's getting a lot of attention. Some big names have been seen hanging out in the Clubhouse like Oprah, Tiffany Haddish, Kevin Hart. However, a growing problem Clubhouse is facing is that People screen record, because it's supposed to be a safe space, and you're not supposed to do this. But they're screen recording, and then they're posting the private conversations online. Even Meek Mill tweeted that it's ruining the personal feel of the app. So, Angie, yeah. you have a voice everyone knows. Let me ask you, do you think what happens in the clubhouse should stay in the clubhouse? <laughs> First of all, you are insane if you think that that's going to happen. Anytime there's a lot of people and you can't control the room, you can't can't control the room when you had when they first started because we got in kind of early and it was small and it was like it was conversations about business and starting your own apps and things like that and then as more people came in then it became like dating and who's the best rappers and who has the biggest what and then it started getting like all oh, the conversations started changing when it started getting broader and broader one of the problems i have with the app is that I, sometimes I just want to be nosy. Sometimes I want to go in a room and hear what everybody's talking about, but then they could see <laughs> you in the room. So then they see yeah. you in the room, and then they go, Angie, what do you think about who has the biggest butt? And I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody about this, but you can't listen without unless you're engaging in the conversation. So they got a few little flaws that they could work, that, work out. But I think, listen, I think if you think you can get on a social app and it's anything is private, you are sadly mistaken. So be very careful about what you share yes. on any of the Absolutely. apps, guys. No, Angie, I that's a good point joined to bring up because when I first joined it, it was in June. Well, when I first was invited, it was in June. And it was actually just like maybe a group of people you can count on your hands that were, whether or not we were supporting Biden and how to help him broadcast his message on a larger level. Like that's the specific type of topics in business mm -hmm. and politics. And now, because it's a free-for-all, like you kind of get an ear in on what people are really thinking about and caring about. And for me, if you end up joining, like there's so much havoc outside in the world. Why are you inviting that into your personal space? Because the notifications are crazy on no, I shut them off. Yeah. I shut those off. No, I shut those it's off. Yeah. I need to. People are talking smack. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. Yo, when it's I crazy. originally joined, I thought it was something super exclusive. And I actually, have you guys ever heard of the app House Party? Where yeah. you can connect yeah. with friends and like the play game. games? Yeah. Guys, I was so ignorant that I actually thought that Clubhouse was that, but exclusive like, on another level. Poor a. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley, you know, my friend Ashley Weatherspoon yeah. was the one that invited me on there. I jump on. My welcome party was with Joe Budden, Ja Rule, B. Simone. I was like, what, uh, what, what am it, I doing? Wait, 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 like, I, wait, but what does it say about us? Because I don't know if this happened to you guys. But when, 
when you feel like there's something going on and all the cool people are there and you haven't gotten invited yet, then when you get the, you're invited to Clubhouse, <laughs> you feel some type of way, like, all right, all right, now the things are right in the world. Yeah, so when like you I got had invited, to join. Yeah, so then I got invited and then I was like, yeah, I'm good. No, I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> but, but, no, but it's literally, I'm, right. I'm so good. Oh. Guys, these conversations are going on all 24 hours, people are on there yep. having conversations. And you have to be so careful where you are because when you get the notifications on top, has anybody been trying to do something and you accidentally tap it? All the and time. You touch up you all the way up. And the language is next level. And you trying to, you either like trying to do something <laughs> with people in church and all of a sudden they're like, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know about you, but I dated a guy with a small <clears throat> Baltimore Ravens quarterback, Lamar Jackson. May have got the win on Monday Night Football this week, but he took a major L on Twitter, you guys. That's because in the middle of the very of a very, very close game, Lamar all of a sudden like rushed off the field into the locker room. And since fans didn't actually see an injury occur, they believed the reason he left so quick is because your boy had to use the bathroom. So speculation grew even more when he was able to come back into the game shortly after and immediately throw a touchdown. So Lamar actually had to address this, you guys. It got so crazy. He had to address this on Twitter saying that it was a calf cramp and not a bathroom break. So ladies, what do you think? I mean, when you got to go, you got to go, right? Do you think he was telling the truth? What are your thoughts? First of all, look, I, look at that, that run. That, that's what I was going to say. That is a pee-pee run. That is I got to go right. Look maybe, at that. I don't know. I don't know if that's a one or a two, but that is a, I gotta go to the bathroom. That's a definitely a two. That's a two, Angie. Oh. <laughs> that's a flat Wait, tummy you stand two. Would still if you had a calf cramp? Yeah, that's not a calf cramp. Exactly. Why would you run? Flat tummy. I mean, that's God that, bless you, I don't know why you, you have to schedule it. I heard what you it. said, Lonnie. Don't say it again. Because <laughs> we again. all know Lonnie, what that schedule is. Schedule it. Schedule it. Because if you don't, it hits you at the wrong moment and you on the field or you about to do this show. You know how many times I've had to, I, I'm like, ooh, I didn't time it right. <laughs> okay. It's that celery juice. I feel, I feel like there's a great opportunity. There's a great opportunity for him to get like an endorsement, like something that you can yes. hold it. Yes. <laughs> Maybe not yes. like some of but there's a some kind of endorsement for him. Yes, there's an endorsement for That's him. That's what I'm talking about. Oh my God, that is so there. funny. You know what? Have you guys really ever been in a situation this? like this? I can relate to this because I, I don't know what it is, but I just have a very small bladder. So you guys know, in between the breaks, I'm always, Ooh. I got to go like three or four times. And I drink a lot of water. I don't want to like stop life and not drink the amount of water you should take every day. But I remember this one time that for me, it bonded me most with Jay. So we were at a winery, right? And we were gonna go take a drive to go fishing from the winery. And the thing that's so important when you take a drive is you gotta let people know exactly how far this drive is. This drive <laughs> was a very long time that nobody talked about. So I look at Jay with his friends and I'm like, yo babe, I gotta go pee. And he's like, for real? <laughs> Without hesitation, he's like, yo man, pull over. I wanna get a drink over here. And I was like, okay, we go into the, 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 the liquor store. They say they don't have a bathroom. And I look at him like, it's gonna come out right now. He goes, <laughs> go around the back, I'm gonna block you. I was like, what? Oh he goes, go around the block, yeah. I'm gonna block you. I go around the block, Jay starts asking the woman behind the, the counter about boiled peanuts, what flavor Dr. Pepper <laughs> they have, while he blocks me, and then he oh. talks to his friends to keep them on hold while he says Jeannie's picking out some stuff in the store so that I can go in the back of the place, do my thang thing, and come back looking like Jeannie Mai would. Like, <laughs> I was so impressed. That, that, I that's am impressed with that. That's a keeper. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. <laughs>